This is the Digital Music Trends uh, coverage of South by Southwest uh, 2013 and I'm here with uh, Ray Votta uh, who is a social media manager and strategist uh, working at VH1 and also consulting for a variety of other companies. So hi Ray, how's it going today? Pretty good. It's uh, really nice out today and it's been a pretty good morning so far. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about your background first. Uh, sort of uh, what's your background in, in the music space especially? Okay, so um, about five, six, seven years ago, I started street teaming, which was my first real introduction to getting into music. I was not a music fan when I was in high school, even. I was kind of that person who was like, eh, I don't really care. I didn't really buy CDs or any of that. Yeah. And then I got into college actually going towards my master's degree, um, which I did in fan communities and uh, linguistics. I, at the same time, got very, very passionate about a bunch of bands that were actually on the Feel by Ramen label yeah. that I loved. And I was like, how do I do more? How do I get involved? And started street teaming. Uh, that led to um, moving to New York pretty quickly thereafter to work on the national street team for Atlantic Records and just kind of coordinating at the national level what all our street teamers were doing across the country, um, which I really loved. It was a lot of fun because I got to talk to those extremely passionate fans all the time, kind of cultivate the like super fans into becoming champions for bands. Um, I was there for a while, ended up moving over to AOL Music um, and the AOL company and doing both outreach to bloggers, so kind of talking to music bloggers about the content that AOL was doing, um, our sessions and our uh, all those kind of things, all the exclusives, the CD premieres, things like that. And then um, also kind of starting up what was becoming social media at that time. They had Facebook, but Twitter was just, just becoming something that companies needed to have. I remember having conversations at AOL that were like, do, do we need a Twitter though? We're a media company. Like who needs a Twitter? And it's yeah. like, no, you do. You should get a Twitter. Like we should have a Twitter strategy. Um, so helping develop what we were going to do for those kind of things. Yeah. Tumblr, when Tumblr was coming out, what we were going to be doing there. Um, stayed kind of in the music transition to the pop culture celebrity realm over there. Um, with Pop Eater, which is now defunct, and was doing a lot more like pop culture, TV shows, things like that. Yeah. Um, and then ended up uh, the last year and a half or so over at VH1. Um, and I had consulted for uh, MTV prior to that, so I had like a little bit of experience with them. I'd worked on um, some show launches, skins, um, early Teen Wolf stuff, which is like, I remember Teen Wolf before it was like a thing. I, I saw pilots and went, okay, I'm not sure. And now Teen Wolf is a huge teen Jeez. phenomenon, so it's yeah. kind of crazy to think about the early days of that yeah, yeah. um and now at each one i do kind of across the board social stuff i do stuff for our television shows we have a really like strong monday night lineup um as well as our behind the music all our music content all our um performances and our rock documentaries that we just premiered um downloaded the rock doc down here about napster which has been amazing i was actually at the panel today that was really interesting talking about the history of napster and uh, and also our nostalgia content, so our pop-up video, and I love the kind of content. Yeah. So it's a broad range nowadays of the kind of stuff I work on, but it kind of has that music core. It's VH1. It's a music channel at its heart, even with the reality, with everything. There's always kind of music tied into all of that. Yeah. So that's basically the, the business background. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, you know, uh, TV is really an exciting space uh, because... The intersection between music and TV is pro probably one of the places where you can see, unless you have a, you're working with a massive artist, where you can see like really a huge interaction and a second screen interaction of, of, of people with the program and with the music that's playing on the program. Uh, so, you know, uh, how do you feel about, about that, that type of interaction? and How can you fuel it in, in a way that can benefit the artist, for example? You know, I think, for one, at VH1, I see it a lot with this music that's playing on our shows because we have a great music team that you know, is picking things to sync into our shows. Yeah. But as a social person, you know, we're seeing that immediate reaction to the songs, people quoting the lyrics they're hearing on a show immediately in the social space, people being like, who is this? What is this song? And we try on the, you know, on that end to have the chirons that come up and tell you what you're playing right now. But you can see those people starting to trend, you know, worldwide or, or US wide for us when they're playing, when our show is trending, you know, yeah. things about our show are trending, then things about music are trending there. Yeah. So that's what I think that the in, advent of that and then the social space for us to also go to say to them, hey, what you just heard was this, hey, you can click on this and buy it right now. Yeah. And kind of being there immediately. Because I know there's always that, oh, what was that song I heard on a commercial? Like, you know, I've heard it eight times, 10 days later, you look it up on the internet. It's nice to be there like, right with the consumer when they're experiencing something. Yeah. It's hard as a commercial to do that because, you know, you can't be tweeting every time your commercial's airing. But as a TV show, it's nice because we're right there with them. Um, and on the flip side, the other stuff um, I do, and I'm a huge, passionate Glee fan, is that side of the way they integrate their music into television is obviously 
phenomenal and massive and they're, you know, tried to replicate it over on things like Smash. Yeah. But the interesting thing there is the opportunity to like expose people to music they haven't heard yet, um, as well as celebrate what's like huge and big. So like they can do the big Nicki Minaj song, they have to kind of do the Carly Rae Jepsen, they gotta do that. But they're picking up these artists like um, Ian Axel, um, This Is The New Year, is a song that's actually been around for a little while. He's an indie New York artist and Glee seemingly out of nowhere. I mean, doesn't really have a label that like a big push going on. They picked him up, they made him like the kind of like marquee song in an episode. And for that fandom to kind of come in and say like, we're gonna obsess over this new artist now because like we've got a stamp of approval from something we already trust. We're gonna see it in this new exciting way. And then for the artist to kind of get to have this cool reaction of like a whole new world seeing their music. Um, I saw like a really cool video that his friends took while he watched the show and his reaction to even seeing his own music on like Glee and TV was really cool. And then the fans were circulating his reaction because they were like, they were as excited for him for that moment, Um, which is a really cool thing. I think that, you know, finding ways to take music and get it on television in different ways and and, and get it out there to new fans is really great. Yeah. People like that. Yeah, of course, and, and television so don't really have an, an agenda, really. Like they don't, the, the, they usually don't have label affiliations or no. anything like that. So it's kind of like it's a, it's a free for all. It really depends on on, on the track and and, yeah, and, the and the artist. Yeah, you know, if they're looking for a song that's gonna like really hit the big scene where the couple's breaking up, or a song that's gonna you know play behind the reality moment where the woman is like crying and breaking down. You know, they're just looking for the song they can find right now that's gonna push that emotion yeah. um, and and that the audience is going to hear and feel like I'm feeling like that woman on TV too I've had that moment now I've got a song to like narrate that moment and it's nice it's a really nice interplay I think between that kind of stuff yeah and and uh, how, how does it how does it work uh, if you have any insights on, on you know the relationship between like for example somebody like yourself that works for for the channel and then the the sync person that picks the track and then the the artist manager or the artist that has got the track is there any any bridges between those or, or is the process quite you know a uh, siloed away no i think there actually are bridges and there's more and more now as social media is happening because like we there's definitely you know the label is pitching things to the sync people all the time obviously the sync people are going out there trying to find the cool new music all the time but we have this like interesting ear on the the brand and the market that the people are coming to us and saying check this out check this out check this out yeah. why haven't you you know we get why have you done behind the music with this artist why have you done this and we can yeah. bring that now you know it's not a hunch it's not an idea we can actually send them the tweets we can like here is the actual tweet that someone and 10 20 50 people are are banding together to say this to you to to tell you how they feel about a song they've heard or to tell you about an artist they want you to check out and you know sometimes that can can be fruitful and sometimes that's just you know it doesn't work it isn't gonna be the right thing and it's you know we're hearing it but we can't take in all the you know we can't make all the changes but you know sometimes I have a good example from uh, tumblr which is one of the things I run at VH1 I have an open ask box there ask box ask box there excuse me for the VH1 tumblr and you know people just leave us notes all the time about the shows they're seeing or, or music they like whatever and I had one person say I saw this video I keep seeing it um, it just they describe the music video and they're like, I didn't notice who it was. Do you know Do you know who it was? And I didn't know. It was like a guy with a dog head on or something like that. And I was like, I have no idea. So I published it. I said, hey, people that are following us, do you have any idea this person's talking about? And a person came back and said, I just saw that play on VH1 10 minutes ago. It's this. So it was actually perfect. Because yeah. like I wasn't watching the TV at that point. So I missed it. I didn't know what anybody was talking about. But I went, hey, this person has a question. Social space, can you answer it? Let's all like work together to find this new artist. And then, hey, I got to help promote an artist that I wasn't planning to promote that day. They weren't yeah. on the list. But you know what? It worked. Uh, and Tumblr is an interesting, is an interesting platform because a lot of people use it as a, as a blogging platform, but there are a lot of interactive features that perhaps are not quite so immediate to the to the first hand user. I'm, I'm not sure. Like, uh, do you think that everybody is getting all of uh, everything out of Tumblr that they should, or is there a lot of stuff that that is still like needs to be exposed a bit better? I think that Tumblr is ends up being kind of what you make of it and the community you make of it. So I wouldn't want to say people aren't getting what they should out of it because I think if you're using it and you're happy and you want to just be a photo blog that puts out photos of your lunch every day, that is a perfectly acceptable and great use for Tumblr. That is like awesome. Um, I think that there's a lot of subset of community that's really been built there in different ways that like to the first time user isn't going to really experience that if you don't start searching a tag, if you don't start looking for people there to kind of find how they're doing it and then mimic that yeah. world. So like uh, one of the things I, uh, when I studied the linguistics of fan culture, I was studying um, live journal communities at the time because Tumblr didn't exist. And 
and Twitter didn't even exist when I was doing um, academic stuff on it. And now as I've seen the change of where fans used to build fan sites, like very dedicated fan sites, and now they are building fan tumblers. And the tumblers all interact and are these sources of incredible and also sometimes very repetitive information because if they reblog the same thing, yeah. they reblog and edit the same picture with a new filter on top of it. All this kind of like very, very, very like obsessive and heavy levels of, of media coming out. And it's actually kind of amazing because that's what fans actually want. They're, they're looking for that very immediate stuff. The Twitter as well, the twi fan Twitters have taken over the presence of a fan club, fan you know page, things like that because it's so much more immediate and they can talk to you really fast. If you have a question for the person who runs it, if you have a tip, if you saw the celebrity you love or the musician you love out on the street, you can tweet at those things and, and let everybody know what is happening as opposed yeah. to, you know, the, the lag of, oh, I got to upload the photo from my, you know, my camera or I got to like develop photos, you know, that's too much. Um, but yeah, with, with Tumblr especially, it's very, especially with fans, extremely a place that they talk a lot. They actually reblog and have these conversations, these threads that go on forever and ever. And and you have to kind of like figure out how to jump in. And sometimes it's a snapshot of a moment. Yeah. That's a conversation that then becomes something you as a piece of media itself. And sometimes it's still going on. It's still organic. People are still adding to it and adding a joke and adding another picture, another GIF reaction. It's, it's very deep. And the first time you look at it, you're like, this is cool. And then you look deeper and you're like, wow, there is a lot going on here that I don't know anything about. Yeah. I mean, the biggest tag on Tumblr, the one that they, and I, I've heard they can't even like get all the information on is, is One Direction based stuff. That is the biggest thing that's happening there. <laughs> one Direction is, is massive on Tumblr and massive everywhere, but massive on Tumblr, so massive that it's taking, you know, it, it's the number one thing on Tumblr by, yeah. by far as a single topic. Of course, uh, and in many other networks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're everywhere. But that's, to me, it's very interesting because there's a lot. There's a lot of art. There's a lot of you know different worlds of Tumblr. Tumblr's not just for fans. Yeah. It's for everyone. But because the like you know politics isn't going to be as big there all year, except outside of the political inside the political season. But like One Direction, all the time. Doesn't oh, matter yeah. day, yeah. night day of the week it's there it's happening yeah and uh, I mean I'm, uh, I myself like wasn't really aware of what they were doing in music until I spoke to Nate uh, Auerbach at, at, at Medium and I had an interview with him uh, and so now I, I get a lot more what, yeah. what, what, what they're about in the music space and um, looking at of course the social media space for, for a TV channel or, or for a band for anybody I mean I, I'm really aware of analytics companies that works, work in, in the music world so yeah. like you know from Next Big Sound to Music Metric uh, what are the analytics that that you would use uh, to monitor traffic uh, on, on, a, on a larger scale for TV channels and stuff like that. So what we're using right now at Beach One is um, Social Guide, and it's a really cool thing that kind of lets us see where the chatter is yeah. for our shows. And it's great because we can kind of get in there, dig deep, and find the big tweets of the night, the hashtags that were coming organically that we aren't, you know, we're pushing a hashtag for every show. We have something set up. Yeah. Um, but you know, for a, we have a show called Love and Hip Hop, and it's got a bunch of different iterations. And so right now we're in Love and Hip Hop New York, so we have a hashtag that indicates just that. But people tend to also use a hashtag that's very general. It's just, just Love and Hip Hop, and so it's nice for us to be able to go in and see which one's winning out on a Monday. Like, are we are we penetrating with our message, or is it the fans? You know, you got to listen to who's who's winning. Even if we want to win, if the fans are winning with their hashtag, then like that's what we should be paying attention to as well. We should be, you know, making sure we generate our ideas that line up with what organically is going to be happening. Yeah. Um, and it's great. It tells you, you know, where your show placed against all your own shows. So like what show of the night is doing the best for you, you know, within your network, what show is doing the best overall across cable, across broadcast. If you take out the sports element, cause sports yeah. is a major player in social space. And when like a game is on, it can dominate things. Um, but then if you take that out, you go, okay, what's happening just on like serious awesome. TV, you know, like what's happening on comedy versus you know, things like that. It's a really cool tool. And we use that, all the time. That is basically our, our biggest tool. Um, and uh, Trender, which has the trend reports as well. It tells you kind of what's been trending, different topics that are coming up in a night. So you can kind of map that back to your programming, be it music or, you know, uh, reality or scripted programming. Yeah. And uh, talking about uh, Facebook, you know, as, as the behemoth of, of social networks, I'm hearing uh, a lot of chatter about people that are not happy with the way Facebook is performing for them, especially as bands. You know, you know the yeah. people that are saying, you know, we've invested time in creating a community on Facebook, uh, and now we we know full well that a lot of our fans don't necessarily interact with the content that we put out, but they do want to see it. Yeah. But the only way that we can do that now is to actually pay for it and pay you know yeah. a fair a fairly high amount. Uh, so, what's your take on, on on Facebook, and and do you feel like there's a move to try and find? Uh, 
it's not an alternative like you know a better channel to be able to communicate with the, your whole fan base yeah. as opposed to just a percentage of it. Um, so you're saying I, I agree that there's a, it's a lot harder to get the attention on Facebook for everyone um, since they've made changes over the past I think like year and a half or so. Um, we've we at VH1 at least grew to change with that and try and you know really really emphasize photos that get the attention that's the yeah. the biggest uh, engagement area. But also thinking that, you know, Facebook is only a segment of our audience. You know, our Facebook audience is also different from our Twitter audience, and we yeah. want to serve them all as much as we can. So I think that the real, I mean, the, the tip or the thing I would feel for everyone, a band or a brand or anything, is that you have to be everywhere. I mean, it's, it's exhausting, and we have every kind of account. You know, I have a login for every single possible social media account as it comes up because you need to be ahead of the curve of where people are going to be, and you need to be serving them across all of it. And you need to be organic to whatever that uh, you know, location demands of you, um, and give them the kind of content they want. So, you know, on a, on a Tumblr, it's not so much text based. We can't just sit there and write text paragraphs. They want picture, they want gift, they want a little bit of video, you know, sound, things like that. It's more of what's going to travel there. So if we have a big, long press release that needs to go on our blog and, uh, you know, we need to get a link to it. We don't need to be putting that everywhere. Um, but I think it's, it's just being everywhere they are and trying to speak to each community and that's going to cover all your bases. Yeah, yeah. And not being too enamored with the idea of like a piece of content being like, nothing's truly exclusive anymore. Yeah. So when you think like, oh, I'm going to exclusively release these pictures on Facebook, you cannot be upset when they're on Tumblr immediately yeah. because they should be. Because those people aren't maybe aren't going to ever go to your Facebook no matter what you do. They don't follow brands. They're yeah. not going to follow bands. They follow Tumblr. They follow their friends. That's who they're trusting. Yeah. And so if they move all over the place, let them move, let it go. And don't, you know, stamp things too horribly. We do stamps on stuff. So, you know, you know where it came from, but like also don't ruin your fans experience by like sticking a thing right over the top of it and, you know, making it unusable, unusable. for somebody. Yeah, yeah, sure. And uh, so I guess like for, for a band really like the, the, the best advice would be to, uh, as always, to really look at their fan base. Cause mm -hmm. you know, for, for, for a band that doesn't have like a, a person that is actually taking care of the social yeah. media there has to be choices that that they make on, on on what they choose to use so i guess it's you looking at who, who 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 you're talking to and then target the social network the best caters to if you if, if you see all your fans are tweeting tweeting all the time and that's where you're getting all your traffic from and they're not really doing anything on your facebook prioritize your twitter if you go onto tumblr and realize oh my god i didn't even know there's like all these amazing tumblers that are about my band I should be on Tumblr. I should be talking back to them. I should yeah. be giving them some content. Maybe I should just be getting in touch with the one whoever runs this and sending it directly to them yeah. if you need to. Um, you know, you shouldn't feel like I don't have a million followers on Facebook, so my band isn't popular. Yeah. That's not true. And I don't, even if you don't have a million followers on Twitter, but you have a lot of talk on Twitter, that's a positive thing. If the people are doing it organically, you don't need to feed them as much. If they're already there, be there with them and enjoy it. Of course. Sure. And uh, just talking about, you know, ending on startups and new services, of course, you, you must see a lot of stuff uh, coming and going and try, try things out. Uh, is there anything in particular that you think, you know, might catch on in, in the next year or so that you've seen? Or do you think, we, you know, we, we're, we're pretty happy with what we have right now? Social's over. We're done. No, um, I really like Vine right now. I mean, yeah. I know that's probably like not even super unique to say, but I think that has a really interesting potential for all sorts of um, social media users from the average person to a brand. I've seen some really cool brand ideas on there. Yeah. I think it's a really fun way to do something quick. I like that it converts to a GIF so you can take the sound out and use it elsewhere as well. Um, that's the one that I'm having the most fun with. I see it. I some like I watch some really great people that are like um, actors who are doing fun skit type stuff with it, and it's just a different way to give your fans a way to look at you. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of what fans want. They want they don't need a twenty minute video because that's going to take a ton of time. That's like for the super fan, but for your like pretty casual fans, six seconds like that's going to start to get them really engaged with you. It makes you more human, more whole, more like realistic. And it doesn't require so much of an investment. Like that's always a problem. It's like, oh yeah, you did a really cool like 10 minute joke movie thing. But like, if I'm not like a super fan of you, if I don't love your brand or your TV show that much, I don't know if I'm gonna spend 10 minutes on the computer on this. But like yeah. six seconds, I can give you six seconds of my life. Um, and like Viddy, the other one that has about 30 seconds of time is also pretty cool. But I like the stop motion aspect of, yeah. Yeah. of Vine. I think it's a little bit more fun to play with. I think it has more room to grow. Awesome. That's my favorite one right now. 
Awesome. Well, thanks so much for your time. And uh, uh, would you care to plug your website and Twitter so that people know where to find you? Myself. So um, my Twitter is Ray Vada. It's R A E V O T T A. Um, and that's also my website. Now, that website is my Tumblr. So I kind of made it all super interconnected. So if you go to RayVada.com, it's my Tumblr. You'll see lots of stuff about Glee, especially on Fridays, Thursdays, and Fridays. <laughs> it's my obsession. But uh, yeah, and it's a lot of fun. I kind of obsessed with linguistics, Glee, fan culture. That's where you'll see when you see my stuff. But it's great. Well, thanks so much for your time. Thank you so much. I had a great and time. you can find all the coverage of uh, Digital Music Trends on digitalmusictrends.com slash SXSW. Thank you. Come on, come on, come on. Come on.